The history of the nationality rooms really begins with an awareness of the region's history, why people came here, how they struggled with each other, and carved out a city and a specific American experience in this part of the United States. Without knowing this community, it is possible to see the nationality rooms as nothing more than little jewel boxes of unusual architecture for this school setting. Pitt moved to Oakland in 1907 and 1908, having been in downtown Pittsburgh for most of its history. Founded in 1787 as the Pittsburgh Academy, a new location meant expansion, and by the end of the 19-teens, Pitt's plans for expansion ran against a wall of funding problems. In 1921, the university hired its 10th chancellor, John Bowman. One of Bowman's signature moves was to commission the construction of the Cathedral of Learning. It dominated the Oakland skyline as a symbol of Pitt, a tool for the educational necessities as Bowman saw it, and he saw the cathedral as more than necessary office and classroom space. It was to be a beacon for students to find for themselves the very stars of heaven are new, as is quoted in the Commons Room, Iron Gates. The Cathedral of Learning contains 31 nationality rooms, as any trip down a first or third floor hallway will show. Behind the Samuel Yellen ironwork railings, lights, and door hardware, one can peer into strange and inspiring spaces that evoke past eras and cultural achievements that were chosen by their designers to be definitive of their immigrant remembrances of homelands. It is the immigrant experience that contributes to the birth of this area, especially with an explosive population boom in the 19th century, with many Europeans coming from the central, eastern, and southeastern regions. Some rooms show the first ethnic colonial presence, such as the English Room, which uses neo-Tudor Gothic architecture to evoke the appearance of the House of Commons. Other rooms include the Greek Room, which is modeled after ancient Greek temple designs. The marble is from Greece, and the chairs show local support for the room. People from the various regions sponsored each chair's creation. Some place names include Crete, Sparta, Lesbos, and Samos, as well as others. The professor's chair and the two guest chairs bear the names of philosophers Plato, Aristotle, and Socrates. Ancient architecture and evidence of archaeology is presented in the Israel Heritage Room on the third floor. Here, the Israel Heritage Room evokes the past during and after Roman occupation and how the post-biblical Judaism reflected its world. Reproductions of 1st through 6th century stonework, mosaics, and Talmudic quotes enrich the imagination and reveal the deep history of the faith. Another room which shows elements of faith is the Romanian Room. Located on the first floor, it is inspired by 17th century Romanian Byzantine chapels. The room teaches us about perseverance. The objects and architecture are largely all donations from the Romanian displays at the 1939 World's Fair. This was the solution to a sponsoring committee that had lost all of its money in the 1929 crash. Reconfigured for this space, donated World's Fair items include the Iron Gates and the mosaic of Constantine Brancovianu, a Romanian martyr. A poetic quote above the door reminds us of the unyielding nature needed against the vagaries of the world. Nationality rooms are rich with quotes, such as in the Ukrainian room, in which a Taras Shevchenko quote from the 19th century exhorts us to learn from many sources but to remain true to one's self and nation. Hospitality towards strangers is even ensconced in the design of the room, being based upon a welcoming first room of a host's home of the 17th to 18th centuries. Several nationality rooms are based upon houses, such as the Norwegian Room of 1948. It is decorated with rose modeling painted wooden surfaces and Viking designs carved into the chairs. 
A fireplace and other items in the room remind one of the adaptations to one's environment in the land of the midnight sun. That includes a reproduction of a 1695 blanket that would have been a wedding gift for newlyweds preparing for a life together. The Swedish room, located on the first floor, also has a fireplace, copied from a cottage now kept at an open-air museum in Stockholm. Folk paintings in an 18th century style are upon the back wall fresco and the imagery painted upon the wooden ceiling. Whimsical errors that must be looked for in the images are a way of reminding us of our imperfections. The Japanese room is also based upon an 18th century domestic architectural style known as Minka, and this room was built to exact dimensions in Kyoto and then shipped to Pittsburgh for reassembly. Areas of the room show how different activities or objects would appear, and excellent, typically Japanese carpentry distinguishes the interpretation of this nationality room. Besides interesting architecture, quotes, and indications of how people adapted to their locations, there is evidence for great achievements in science, music, art, and literature. The Scottish Room of 1938 has the names of William Thompson, Lord Kelvin, Alexander Graham Bell, and Alexander Fleming engraved into the woodwork, reminding visitors of the worldwide application of thermodynamics, telecommunications, and antibiotics. In the German Room, Ernst Siemens and Wilhelm Rentgen are among the scientific names, and stained glass windows that show ten Grimm's fairy tales are one way literature is represented. Other stories are shown with intarsia panels describing poems by Heine and Goethe and stories converted to Wagnerian operas. The Italian room is in a Tuscan Renaissance style and shows the names of composers and artists such as Verdi, Botticelli, and Da Vinci. Student benches are modeled on the appearance of pews, and the backs of each seat bear the name of an Italian town and the year a university was chartered in that town. Part of the appeal of the nationality rooms is how they came to be and how they are presented to the public. Committees formed from members of these ethnic communities worked on the designs of the rooms and fundraised to build them. After each room's completion, a dedication ceremony was held to transfer the ownership of the structure to the University of Pittsburgh. The history of the program was predicated upon these partnerships. Committees have remained active to promote their ethnic groups, with the individual rooms being the rallying point for the public to be aware. An annual open house is held so the public is made aware of the rooms and the committees, and the proceeds from that goes towards committee-sponsored and committee-fundraised summer study abroad scholarships. To date, several millions of dollars have been awarded over the decades to enable Pitt undergraduate and graduate students to pursue international opportunities and enhance their academic careers. The nationality rooms are presented by undergraduate tour guides, members of Quo Vadis. Quo Vadis started in 1944 as a well-trained group of students dedicated to educating the public about the nationality rooms through public group tours, open house, and club events. The students gain valuable experience as public speakers first experiences in historical interpretation in a museum-like setting, material handling with a costume collection and assistance with artifact display and exhibition, and fundraising. If any undergraduate student is interested to become a Quo Vadis guide, contact the Nationality Rooms tour coordinator and Quo Vadis advisor to learn of opportunities. It is evident that the Nationality Rooms are more than unusual classrooms. They are the visible proof of immigrants reflecting upon their heritages, drawing our attention to achievements that coalesce into a shared experience. They are illustrations of the local in conjunction with the global and representative of the American experience, and specifically the Pittsburgh experience. Museum-like repositories, actively used spaces, places to reflect on one's own family background, and possible first exposures to culturally significant achievements. All of these ways show that the nationality rooms are unique for the way they intersect with people's expectations and uses, and they continue to live on.